return. Let's approach the throne of grace. Lord, we come to you this morning to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for everything you've done for us. We thank you for everything that you do. Lord, we just thank you for bringing us through our lives. Every day of our life was blessed with your grace and your mercy, Lord. We especially thank you for giving your only begotten son that made the ultimate sacrifice for us, Lord. We thank you for Jesus the Christ. We thank you for this Resurrection Sunday, Lord. We just thank you for being you, Lord. We just thank you for being in our presence, Lord. We thank you to be able to speak to you every day like we speak to one another, Lord, and you hear us. We just thank you for being you, Lord, once again, Lord. Lord, we bless your holy name by giving you the highest praise of hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And it's in Jesus' name that we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Shallow. Good morning. Happy Resurrection Day to all of us. Um, if you open your hymn books to page number 269, He Lives. We will sing all three verses and the chorus. The chorus after each verse. And let's sing it like He lives today. Okay? Page 
Good morning, Shiloh Baptist Church, and welcome to our Sunday morning worship. Today is Resurrection Sunday. The Sunday we celebrate that he died on Friday and he rose on Sunday. Can I get an amen? Can I get a hallelujah? Can you just praise God for what he has done for you and your family, for your bloodline? God is so worthy to be praised. We thank you for joining us. If you are in our in-person and this is your first time, raise your hand and someone will greet you with a welcome to Shiloh Baptist Church. If you are on our YouTube channel right now in our YouTube sanctuary, welcome to Shiloh Baptist Church. If this is your first time joining us, just type first time in the live chat. We are ready for praise and worship this morning. Here at Shiloh, we know that prayer is needed in our day-to-day tasks. From waking up to going to bed, someone is praying for you. Someone is calling your name. Someone is touching and agreeing on your situation. And here at Shiloh, we want you to know that we are doing that. And here are two options that you can connect with us for prayer, for spiritual support, for spiritual guidance. The first option is you can go to our website at shilohbc.org forward slash spiritual support. Here, you will be able to fill out our spiritual support form. You will be able to give us your name, your contact information, and what Shiloh can do to help you on your spiritual journey. Then the second option is you, if you are in our live chat on our YouTube sanctuary, you can put your email address and your prayer request in our live chat. There are deacons and ministers that are waiting in our live chat to connect with you, to pray for you, and to see how Shiloh can help you. We are here to help our community grow. We are here for kingdom building. And we want you to know that we do things in a big way here at Shiloh. So don't forget to connect with us here on our social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, and X to be reminded of events that are happening at Shiloh, as well as inspirational messages. Also, you can watch our worship services on replay, as well as other services that we have here at Shiloh. Join us now as we will have prayer and scripture reading. And then we will have offering. Please stand for prayer and scripture reading. Good morning, church. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. Um, Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for bringing us, for being here. Thank you for us getting here safely. Everything. Thank you for everyone coming here and just praying to the Lord. Thank you for our pastor that's going to give us the word for today. And thank you for the food that we're going to eat after this church. And getting safely to wherever you got to go, the direction or destination that you got to go after this church. Um, Amen. 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 Good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday. The scripture I will be reading today is Luke chapter 27, verses 1 through 7, King James Version. Or chap- yeah, chapter 24, verses 1 through 7, King James Version. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed, 
Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was, when he was yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. Amen. God's word is already blessed. Amen. Good morning and happy Resurrection Sunday to each and every one of you. We have some beautiful uh, Easter lilies that were donated in memory of loved ones. So I would like to acknowledge that this morning. In love and memory of Brother Charles Chapman, we miss and love you. This is from uh, wife, uh, wife, sister, Sylvia Chapman, daughter, sister, Tammy Chapman, and granddaughter, Joy Chapman. In remembrance of Edward Dillingham, from Yolanda, Donovan, Denai, and Cheryl. In remembrance of Maria Joy, from Cheryl, John, Yolanda, Donovan, and Denai. In memory of Sister Latrell Jen, from Sister Laverne Campbell in memory of Uncle Hubert Jen, Sister Laverne Campbell. In loving memory of Robert L. Lindsay, our eyes can no longer see you, but you're always there in our hearts. We love and miss you. This is from the Lindsay family. Uh, we have one donated in memory of Sister Daisy Saunders. No brighter promise, no greater love. Happy Easter in loving memory of my mom, Reverend Belinda Turner from Tamia Lampkins. Thank you. God bless everyone. for you to give back a portion of what the Lord has blessed you with. Please stand for the consecration of tithes and offerings, followed by all things come of thee, O Lord. Dear Father, may thy love abound toward us as we now bring to thine altar. This, our gifts. Help us that we may not give our money as necessity, nor grudgingly, knowing that God loves a cheerful giver. We ask thy blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. ways of giving on the screen. You can text GIVE to 301-321-8801. You can use the F1 Go app. You can also go to our website at shilohbc.org forward slash give, or you can mail in or drop off your tithes and offerings at the church. If you have any questions about your giving, then you can email contributions at shilohbc.org. Now up next, we will have a musical selection, and then we will be blessed with a word from our pastor, the very own Reverend B. Lewis Colleton. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Happy Resurrection Day.
blessed assurance Jesus is mine he's been my fourth man in the fire time after time born of his spirit washed in his blood and what he did for me on calvary is more than enough so i trust in god my savior the one who will never in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail, he will never fail, perfect submission, all is at rest. I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my steps. So this is my story. This is my song, my song, praising my risen King and Savior all the day long. Oh, and I trust in God. I do, my Savior, He's the one who will never fail, He'll never fail, yeah, I trust in God, my Savior, He's the only one, the only one, He'll never, He'll never, He'll never fail. righteous forsaken never seen a seed begging for bread we serve a faithful God yes we do yeah I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered that's why I trust him that's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he heard me. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered me. I sought the Lord, and he heard, yeah. and he answered me. Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why I trust him. That's why. That's why I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he heard me. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. Yes, he did.
any hurt, any answer me. I sought the Lord. Late in the midnight hour, yes, he did. He heard my humble cry, and he answered, that's why. That's why I sought the Lord. And he heard me, and he heard me. I sought the Lord. And he answered my cry, yes, he did.
Are there any other testimonies? Are there any other testimonies that you sought the Lord and he heard? <laughs> Are there any other testimonies that you sought the Lord? He heard you and he answered your prayer. If there's another testimony, somebody ought to be in to give God the praise and bless his holy name because he heard your prayers. He heard your prayers and he answered you. Somebody give God the praise if you can this morning. A happy Resurrection Sunday to all of my father's children. Blessed be his holy name. Truly, I trust him because I sought him and he heard heard my prayers and not only did he hear my prayer but he answered my prayers blessed be the name of the Lord some things I don't have to ask anybody else about because I know for myself that he is one who hear our prayers and he will answer them in his own way and in his own time. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, choir. I want to thank all of those who donated these beautiful lilies in remembrance of your loved ones. Let me do this uh, only because it just dropped in my spirit. And I'm going to ask you to stand and I want to just remember all of our loved ones in a silent moment because most all of us in here have someone who the Lord called from labor to rest. Let us have a silent moment, and I will conclude with a brief prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for those who have come before us. And in your wise providence, you decided to call them from labor to rest. Some were young and some were not so young. But in your wise providence, you suffer them to leave this side of life and come to enjoy eternal life with you. And so we thank you for our loved ones. We thank you for those who taught us to come to church, taught us to do our Bible verses and to learn our Easter uh, speeches and scriptures. We thank you for those, our Father, whom you loan to us to bless our lives that we might know you in the pardon of our sins. Thank you for our loved ones. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. If you would, grab your Bibles and turn with me to the Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. John, the 20th chapter. And while you're turning to John, the 20th chapter, 
allow me to breathe out a word of prayer. Father, we thank you now for this yet another Sunday morning, another opportunity to hear from heaven and get our lives in order that we would better serve you day in and day out. Come, Holy Spirit, and have your way. You have spoken to me, now speak through me and speak for me, that we all will hear from heaven. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen and amen. John, the 20th chapter, beginning at verse 1, from the King James, you should find these words. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone, the what? Taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth, and calleth to Simon Peter, and the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and the other disciple, and came to the sepulcher, so they ran both together, and the other disciples did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying. Yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulcher and seeth the linen cloth lay, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. This is the word of God for the people of God. As you take your seats, my brother and my sister. I want to talk with you for a little while from this text, a message, the empty tomb. Jesus left the tomb to take up residence in you. Jesus left the tomb to take up residence in you. Point one of this message, Mary Magdalene was the first to announce that the tomb was empty. Mary Magdalene, now, the other gospel writers proclaim that it was not just Mary Magdalene, but it was also Mary, the mother of Jesus. Salon, the sister of Mary, mother of Jesus. But here, John only reference Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene is a special woman. 
she has a re relationship with Jesus that no other woman had at that time. She is the only woman who came to Jesus possessed with seven demons and Jesus have mercy. Jesus cleanse her of all seven demons. Somebody ought to be able to say amen. Because they're there, it doesn't matter how many demons you have. Jesus is able to clean house. If you would dare give yourself to Jesus, he will clean house. But then we got to be careful. Remember what Jesus taught us. He said, when you clean your house of one demon, you got to be careful. Stay in church. Stay close to the Lord. <laughs> Pray in season and out of season. Because that one demon that you got rid of, he's upset with you. And he'll come back and try to get in again. But blessed be the name of the Lord if your house is fortified with prayer and the blood of the Lamb of the living God, the windows are sealed with the blood, the doorposts have been marked with the blood, that demon cannot get in again. But Jesus said, be careful, because that same demon when he discovers that you have fortified your life, he will go and recruit seven demons stronger than he is, and then they will come back and attack your house. And my brothers and sisters, if you're not fortified with the blood of the Lamb, if you're not sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, if you don't have evidence that the demons might know that you don't belong to the uh, world anymore, they will come in and take up residence in your house. And Jesus said your second condition would be seven times worse than your first. So be careful. You give up drinking, Watch out, smoking is somewhere around the corner. You give up smoking, be careful. Drinking is somewhere around the corner. You give up chasing women, uh, a beautiful one will show up somewhere around the corner. You said you're done with men running and cheating on you. Be careful because there's a hunk right around the corner waiting to dilute your promises and walk right in your life. You got to be careful. So this Mary Magdalene that John points out is a very unique woman and she loved Jesus. And Jesus said these words about her. To whom much is forgiven, much love and commitment is shown from that person. She is the first one down through history to discover that the tomb is empty. Jesus, whom she and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Salome, the sister of Jesus, they all saw Jesus being placed in Joseph's tomb on Friday. Because of the Jewish holiday, or religious days, 
They couldn't go there after sundown on Friday. They couldn't go there Saturday. But early Sunday morning, while the dew was still on the roses, while the sun, the, U, the S-U-N, had not fully r risen yet, she goes down to the tomb and discovers that the tomb is empty. Lord have mercy. Aren't you glad the tomb was empty? I don't know about you, but I'm glad the tomb was empty. Because as I have learned more and more about the empty tomb, I have discovered that Jesus left the tomb in order to take up residence in somebody like me. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that, you know, one of the, one of the problems among Christians is that we know the story, but we don't believe the story. We know the story, but so many don't give the story credit. But can I tell you? that until you give the story credit, until you know that you know that you know that Jesus lives in you, you will always walk around like a second-class citizen. I refuse to walk like Jesus is dead. I refuse to walk like Jesus doesn't walk with me. I refuse to walk like Jesus has escaped me. No, I know where he lives. He lives in me. That's why the tomb is empty, because he lives in me. Does he live in you? Don't fool me now. Don't fool me. Don't fool me. Does he live in you? Do you know that Jesus lives in you? My brothers and sisters, we as Christians ought to walk like Jesus lives in us. We ought to behave like Jesus lives in us. Mary Magdalene has declared to Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. And those of you who are biblical scholars, you know who that disciple is. That's no other than John the Beloved, the writer of this gospel himself. And the word declared that John outran Peter. You know, young people can do a whole lot of things that old people used to be able to do. And sometimes you young folks think that you got an a, a edge up on old folks. But can I tell you, we used to run too. But something got a hold of us and kept us on planet Earth. It's called aging. And the more we age, the slower we get. But don't ever, don't ever count our slowness to ignorance. Don't ever count our slowness of lack of knowledge. Don't ever count the fact that we can't move as swift as you can, that we don't know more than you do. I'm here to tell you, young folks, you could learn a lot from folks who can't run as fast as you can today. You can learn a whole lot if you would just sit down with some of these gray-headed men and women. They can tell you things that you have not even thought of yet. If you would just take the time and honor and respect the grandparents and the parents and the great-grandparents, I promise you, God will elevate you with knowledge and understanding. Young folks, you ought to count it as a blessing if your mama's still living. Double blessing if your grandmama's granddaddy's still living. 
a triple blessing if your great-grandmama, great-granddaddy is still living. You ought to count it that you are blessed beyond measures because you got three, four generations of wisdom and knowledge that you could glean from if you choose to. Stop running after a ghost. You cannot see it. It's in your imagination. You are running after something that's not there. Sit yourself down and gain some wisdom and knowledge from those who have gone before you. Thank you, Pastor. I didn't ask for that, but thank you so very much. So the first day of the week, and we know the first day of the week is Sunday. Sunday is the first day of the week. Sometimes I hear people talking about Monday is the first day of the week. No. Monday is, in our culture, the first working day of the week, but Sunday is the first day of the week. And therefore, the first day of the week, somebody said, well, if Sunday is the first day of the week, uh, then Saturday is the Sabbath. Saturday is the seventh day of the week. Why don't we have service on the seventh day of the week. Can I help you to understand any time you call on his name, it's a Sabbath. I don't care what day of the week it is, it's the Sabbath. Let me help you to understand this. Jesus himself does not say where two or more gathered in my name on the Sabbath, I'll be in the midst of them, but he says whenever two or more are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that no matter what day of the week it is, Jesus is right there. I don't argue with people who want to worship on this day or that day as long as you take time to worship your God. We give God the first day of the week because it was understood long time ago that we ought to give our very first unto the Lord. And therefore, our very first being the first day of the week, we give unto the Lord. Blessed be his holy name. My brothers and my sisters, Mary Magdalene, she is the first to announce that it is an empty tomb. Now she goes and tells John and uh, John the beloved and Peter uh, that they have taken away the Lord and we don't know where they, where they have laid him. And the word of God said, John outran Peter. Peter is now older uh, than John. John is the youngest of them all. And perhaps this is why Jesus gave his mother over to John, because he knew that John would live longer than the old folks would. But however it might be, when they got there, when they got there, John had outran Peter, but out of honor and respect, young folks, Peter stooped down, but he didn't go in because that was not his place to go ahead of his elder. So John just stooped down, he looked in, but when old man Peter showed up, the word says he went right in. John and Peter, point two, John and Peter testified that Jesus left evidence that he was there. He left evidence that he was there. Aren't you glad he didn't take the linen he was wrapped with and the napkin he, they had wrapped his head with? But he left that to help Peter and John and us today. Not only is the tomb empty, but I was here. But I was here. There are some of us in here who has the testimony that Jesus 
did stop by during the night. Some of us have the testimony that Jesus did stop by our hospital bed and blessed us. Some of us have the testimony that Jesus went over there where my hard-haired son was and touched his life. We have some evidence. You have evidence, whether you know it or not, when you went to bed last night, there was no guarantee that you would wake up this morning. But look at your evidence. Look at your evidence. Matter of fact, you walked in with your evidence. You walked in as evidence that I slumber and slept between life and death. And when death came to me last night, Jesus says, not yet, leave him alone. I don't know about you, but I know that the Lord kept me all night long. He kept me while I slumber and slept. He kept me while hurt, harm, and danger lurked all around me. He kept me while death had my name. But the Lord says, wrong address. You got to move on. He kept me. You have evidence that Jesus came by. Some of us in here got more evidence than others, but you got evidence. You got evidence. I heard a preacher tell this story, and it was fascinating. He was telling the story about the shepherd and the sheep, and how whenever a sheep would go astray, how the shepherd would go out in search for that sheep. And whenever the shepherd found the sheep, he would break one of the front legs of the sheep. And you might ask, why would he do that? He would throw the broken leg sheep on his shoulder and bring the sheep back to the fold men to him and let him go. He did that so that when he saw a sheep limping, he knew he once was lost, but now he's found. When I see, when I see the walking canes, when I see that thing that you walk, the walker, coming in the church, I see the evidence that Jesus came by. You were crippled, but Jesus picked you up. You were hospitalized, but Jesus kept you. You were in treatment, but Jesus kept you through the treatment. When I see oxygen masks, I see that you are short on breath, but God is still your supplier of all that you need. When I see you're walking a little slower than you used to, I see the evidence that Jesus picked you up and turned you around and brought you back to the fold. Look at you. Look at you. Tonight, when you get home, look in the mirror and look at what the Lord has done. Look at the evidence of Jesus. He touched you, he blessed you, and you are still moving about. Lord, have mercy. I wish I had a church who understood how blessed they are, how much God has left evidence that he has been in your life. My brothers and my sisters, when we look at our lives, I want us to understand 
that the tomb is empty. Jesus left the tomb to take up residence in you and in me. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that he left the tomb because coming out of the tomb demonstrates that he is a risen savior, that he walks with me and he talks with me along this Christian journey. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Point three, the more room you make for Jesus, the more he will occupy. Let me help you to understand this one. The more garbage you get rid of and make that space where garbage used to be for Jesus, the more he will come in and occupy. You show me a child of God who spend time with Jesus. I'll show you one whom Jesus spends time with. You show me a child of God who put aside everything and everybody to put the Lord out in front of their lives. And I'll show you a believer whereby the Lord is out in front of their lives. You see, my brothers and sisters, we deal with all of these emotions that we don't have to deal with. We jealous of one another. We got all this envy and strife towards each other. For what reason? There is no secret what God has done for your brother. He's able to do for you. There is no secret. God bless your sister. There is no secret. He's able to bless you. So why am I envious? Why am I jealous? Somebody wears something new and it looks nice on them. You ought to be happy for them. You ought to thank God for them. You ought to praise God for them. I've said this again and again. Let me say this again. Every time you become envious and jealous of somebody because of what God has done, you have frown against God. You have rejected the hand mercy of God. You have said, God, you made a mistake by blessing my brother or my sisters. Honey, but when you take the time out to worship God, to praise God for what he has done for your brother, your sister, God is saying you just made room for your blessing. I wish somebody was in here who can understand what I'm saying, that when you can bless God for other people's blessing, you are making room for your own blessings. But when you are cursing other folks for what God has done for them, honey, you just closing the door on your own blessings. We got to learn how to praise God when he does something for other people. You say, well, uh, he got off. Uh, he should be serving time in prison. Uh, he should, uh, she went back to him. She should have left him right where he was. You might be telling the truth, but honey, you should be serving time too. Uh, you should also, somebody should have left you too. But the mercy and grace, you ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Mercy and grace. You ought to say, thank you, Lord. Mercy and grace. You ought to say, Lord, I thank you for keeping my husband in place. Thank you, Lord, for keeping my wife in place. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me when I should have been locked up. Mercy and grace showed up and blessed me anyhow. 
You see, my brothers and sisters, it's easy for us to want God's blessings. But why is it so hard we don't want other people to receive God's blessings? My brothers and sisters, I, I rally around people whom God's blessed. I cheer them on. I cheer God on. I, I bless God for all that he is doing in their lives. And they don't have to be family members. I don't care who it is. If God is blessing you, I'm excited about that because what, what, why should I be excited about what God is doing for you? I am excited because if he did it for you, he can do it for me. Somebody needs to hear that one right there. You see, somebody needs to hear that God does things that we, his children, might know he is able. He is able. And some of you have looked at other people and say, how in the world did they get out of all that trouble? The same way you got out of all your trouble. Mercy and grace. Don't ever separate yourself from them. In verse 9, for as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went home, or went again went away again unto their own home. My brothers and sisters, I want you to pay attention to this because it helps me to understand that sometimes we fail in serving God. We quit before we should quit. We give up before we should give up. And then the flip side of that, we run ahead of God. But can I tell you that we have to practice more patience with the Lord? Because, honey, God is not going to move quicker than he already had planned to move. And God is not going to move in a different direction because you are crying about it. God has already decided how he's going to bless you. He's already decided when he's going to show up. He's already decided when you're going to be healed, when you're going to be delivered. And guess what? God is not going to speed up because you are tired. If you're tired, you ought, you, watch this, if you're tired, you ought to just call on God and ask him to renew your strength because he, he will new, renew your strength, but don't you run ahead of God. Too many of us as Christians run ahead of God. If you are praying for God to move in your life, stand still. Stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. If you are praying that God will change your husband, change your wife, change your boyfriend, change your girlfriend, if you are praying that God will change your daughter, change your son, you get out of God's way and let God handle the situation. Remember just last Sunday I told you that you are fighting battles that don't belong to you. God says the battle is mine, says the Lord. If you got attitude that you want to see change, you need to get out of God's way because you couldn't even change your own attitude. You needed God to help you to change your own attitude. Some of you... <clears throat> Some of you are so loving today. Some of you are so kind today. Some of you are filled with mercy today. Some of you don't even let profanity enter your mind today. But the truth of the matter is, it wasn't always like this. 
Oh, the, the quietness in the house today. My brothers, my sisters, have you always been this kind? Have you always been profanity free? Have you, well, you ought to give God the praise because it's the Lord who kept you and blessed you through it all. Well, I never use profanity. Well, you thought profanity. Why do you think Jesus says, so as a man think it, so is he. You say, I, I, I never curse, I never, okay, but prof profanity did enter your mind. And, you, and the actual word didn't have to enter your mind for you to think profanity. To think evil towards somebody else is profanity. To think of doing evil to somebody else is profanity. My brothers and sisters, Jesus, he left the tomb to take up residence in you. And I'm glad he took up residence in me. Because you see, unlike many of you, I need the Lord. I need the Lord. I say, I need the Lord. Some of you walk around like, like you got this thing. Some of you walk around like, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't need all that. Some of you, uh, 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 just declare in your own actions that I don't need all that prayer. I don't need, honey, I need it. I need it all. I need the Lord. I need prayer. I need God's mercy. I need God's grace. I need God's forgiveness. And if you don't need it, send it my way. I'll take it. Because the truth of the matter is, the word declares that we are all but filthy ranks who have gone astray, each to our own way. We're like sheep. The pastor is wide open. We run our own way. How many of you didn't run your own way? How many of you didn't do your thing? And now you criticize young people. Listen, people have not changed. People want to do their own thing. And just like somebody was patient with you and me, you be patient with your sons and your daughters and your grandchildren. Now, let, watch this. If you brought them to church, if they are baptized believers, they are now in God's hand. You get out of God's way and let God handle your son. Let God handle your daughter. Let God handle your grandchildren. Why? Because that's God's business. Your business was to bring them to church, pray with them in season and out of season. Your business was to teach them what thus says the Lord. And if you have accomplished that, then get out of God's way because God got some stuff for your sons and your daughters. My brothers and my sisters, the disciples went away. I'm about finished here now. John and Peter went to their own house. But if you read further, Mary stayed around. In verse 10 through 20, we find that Mary did not follow the disciples. Mary did not give up on looking for Jesus. Anybody in here looking for Jesus? <laughs> I'm not saying looking for Jesus as though Jesus is lost, but looking for Jesus as though you are lost. My brothers and my sisters, Mary stayed around the tomb. She went out in the garden and hears a voice, said, who are you looking for? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? And Mary says, listen, 
thinking it was a gardener. Listen, if you know where they have laid, my Lord, tell me. Show me. But when you read this story, please don't miss this. It's Jesus talking to Mary all along. But when Jesus said Mary, <laughs> the word says that Mary turned and says, Rabbi, which means master or teacher. In other words, when Jesus called Mary by name, she knew who Jesus was. That's why the old folks could sing that song, Nobody Can Do Me Like Jesus. Because see, nobody can call your name like the Lord can call your name. We can act crazy, we can do crazy things, but when the Lord calls your name, you know you best stop and says, yes, Lord. And Jesus is calling somebody's name right now. You came to church because it's Resurrection Sunday. You came to church because your mama made you promise you would be here. You came to church because this is one of those three days. But can I tell you, it doesn't matter why you came. God had another purpose for your being here. Hear what I'm saying. Do you all realize that wherever you go, God already knew you were going to be there? And God has a divine purpose for your being there. When you go to the hospital, do you not know that God knew where you were going to be? Do you not know that outside of your sickness, your illness, that God has another purpose for you being there? Oh, brothers and sisters, don't ever underestimate your Lord and your Savior. God is too wise for us to try to figure out. You might be there for one nurse or one doctor are one patient, and when you have finished that, then your sickness dries up. Oh, I'm not asking you for your information. I got the information firsthand. Hear what I'm saying to you. Therefore, you should never take your presence as though it's your soul instructions to yourself. The Spirit led you. Thank God you were obedient to come, but God got a divine purpose for your life. He is calling you by name. And there is somebody in this place who this is not news to you that God is calling your name. You've just been running. You've been doing it your way. And today God is saying, listen, I brought you here today because I want to elevate you from that slump that you've been in to higher grounds. I want to bless you. I want you to know that I'm for real. Somebody here, God is calling you by name and you cannot deny that the Lord is calling you by name. What God sent you to do, do you know you cannot escape that thing? I don't care how you run. I don't care how you think you're hiding. You cannot escape God. 
You say, I'll turn out all the lights. David says, even in the darkness and daylight is one and the same with God. Meaning God doesn't need you to turn on the lights for you, for God to see you. You might have slid further down in your seat. Uh, my brother, my sister, listen. God already has tagged you. The blood of Jesus is upon you. And the calling is so strong on you until you want to run out the church right now. But let me tell you, you can run, but you can't hide. I'm going to stop right there because the Spirit is telling me to stop to make this appeal to you, whoever you are. And there are more than one of you. Whoever you are, God is speaking directly to you. Let's stand all over the building. Let's stand all over the building. And somebody might, might be saying to yourself, I'm too young or I'm too old. At the age of 12, Jesus was reading the scriptures. At the age of 90 plus, there was a little boy by the name of Isaac was born to a mother and a father who were in their 90s. You are never too old for God to use, and you're never too young for God to use. If you know that God is speaking to you, brothers and sisters, this is no joke, and I show sure enough don't play around with God. If you know that God is speaking to you, I just want you to raise your hand right where you are. Just raise your hand right where you are. I see one, I see two, I see three. Come on, y'all. Come on. This is some real stuff here. There's nothing fake about this. This is the moving of the Holy Spirit. I see a fourth person here. Where are you? Where are you? Is that one, two, three? And there, there, I think that might be the fifth one. Come on, y'all. This, this is real. This is so real until you can feel it, you can touch it, you can cut it with a knife. Come on, come on, let's be for real right here, right now, right now. Just raise your hand right where you are. Just raise your hand right where you are. The Lord is calling you by name, by name. I often say to myself, what a blessing to have the Lord to call my name. Out of all the names he could call, call my name. Is there, are there any others? Just raise your hand. This is your hour. This is your moment. Just raise your hand right where you are. Somebody is coming. Somebody is going to talk with you. Just raise your hand right where you are. Just raise your hand. There are two more of you in here. I don't know where you are. It's not my business to know. But the Spirit of the Lord is moving in this place. There are two more of you. You should be raising your hand right now. Just, just raise your hand. Is this, this hand straight back there, the Brother Chair? Is that a hand there by that red hat? There are two more of you should be raising your hand. You know who you are. Just raise your hand right where you are. The Lord is speaking to you by name, by name, by name. Wherever you are, you can't hide from the Lord. And don't put off today for next Sunday because we don't even know what tomorrow will bring. Just raise your hand right where you are. Just raise your hand right where you are. As we move into prayer, 
Somebody in here. Somebody in here. You. Thank you, sister. Thank you. There's another hand in here. That's that first hand. Where's that other hand? Come on. You all cannot beat God. I promise you, you cannot do that. Is there, where, where, where is that? Is there another hand? It, is that, that's, that's that same hand. I, there's another hand somewhere. Somewhere. Come on, y'all. You know, you, you, Jesus said to Paul, uh, when he, his name was still Saul, he said, Saul, it's hard for you to kick against the prick. And many of you may not understand what that meant, but it, it, it was a, a long board that was filled with nails. And when they would plow the ox, and the ox wanted to get stubborn and start kicking, the nails would puncture the hoofs and the feet of the ox that would deter him from kicking. Is there one more? Is there one more? Is there one more? Okay, I'm going to leave you and God to fight that one. I've done what the Lord would have me to. But if I was you, I would not take it for granted that you would be anywhere another opportunity. Somebody is in here, and I want to give you this opportunity to To know that God is moving in your life. If you know God is working in your life and you want God to strengthen you, empower you, I want you to step out in the aisle right now. Just step out in the aisle right now. You know God is working in you, but you want God to strengthen you. You want God to empower you. You know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord left the tomb to take up residence in you. But you want to experience God on a higher level, on a different level. Just come, shift to the center aisle. Father, in the precious name of your son, Jesus, God, I thank you for these, your children, these, your people. I thank you, Father, for using, using your humble servant to break the bread of life in the midst of your people. And Lord, while I've turned that one person over to you, you have risen that person again in my spirit. Whoever you are, the Lord is saying to you, he is calling you by name. You can't run, you can't hide. Yield unto the Lord, for the word of God declares, the day that you hear the Lord calling you, harden not your heart. Lord, I ask your blessings upon that person right now. And I ask you right now in the name of Jesus to empower all of us who know that you live in us. But God, we want, we want you to use us. We want us, we want to, to, to hear you speak when you speak see you move when you move and lord we surrender ourselves to you and say we belong to you now lord use us as you will and give us the strength and courage to accept whatever whatever life comes at us with knowing that you will fight the battle if we would just remain faithful to you Lord, bless those who are hospitalized and sick and shut in. Bless those who are here today and not feeling well in their bodies. Oh God, I thank you for being a deliverer. 
I thank you for being a healer. I thank you, God, for being a problem solver. Come, Holy Spirit, and have your way in this place. And in the lives of those who are in listening land, bless that man, that woman, that boy, or girl, according to their need. Salvation is theirs today. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you now for blessing those in the hospital, convalescent homes, those who are going through one treatment after another. Bless them, I pray you, with your healing presence. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Somebody give God the praise and bless his holy name. Good morning, Shalom. As many of you know, our pastor was in the hospital about, about 10 days ago. And uh, the Lord delivered him from what ails him. And so today we just want to have prayer with him. If I could have the deacons come down and, and join our pastor down front here. Father, we come before you this morning just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see another Resurrection Sunday, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for giving your only Son, Lord, so that he could forgive us for our sins, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for loving us and caring for us. This morning, Lord, we come to lift up our pastor, Lord. You know, Lord, that 10 days ago he was in the hospital, Lord. And Lord, there's no doubt that, that you were there with him, Lord. You were there with him every minute, every hour, and every day that he was in the hospital. And we just said thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for guiding the hands and guiding the minds of the nurses and the doctors and the technicians, Lord, who you gave the knowledge in order for him to be treated, Lord. And we just said thank you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for being a guide, a guide and light to those doctors and to those nurses and to those technicians, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for being with our pastor through it all. We thank you, Lord, for delivering him for what ailed him, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for healing his body, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for allowing him to just run on for you another day, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that he was able to come out of the hospital and preach a sermon that you gave him last week, Lord. Lord, we ask you now, Lord, just continue to be with our pastor, Lord. You gave him to us 27 years ago, Lord. And 27 years, Lord, he stood there to preach your word each and every Sunday that he was able to. And we thank you, Lord, for your healing powers, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for just laying a hand of deliverance on him, Lord. Lord, we ask you now, just continue to bless him, Lord, continue to keep him, Lord, as he goes about his daily duties of treating, of caring for your sheep. Lord, we ask you now, just continue to bless him, continue to keep him, Lord. Be his refuge and be his strength, Lord, so that he can keep on running for you. Lord, we ask you now just to continue to be with our pastor and continue to be with Shiloh Baptist Church as a whole, Lord. Let us show love for one another, Lord. Let us show our devotion to you, Lord. 
Let us praise your holy name each and every day, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor for every good and perfect gift that you provide for us. This we ask in the precious name of Jesus. And we say amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for you, our deacons, our spiritual deacons. Thank you so very much for your prayers. Thank you, Shiloh, for your prayers. Thank you. And we bless God for his renewing powers, his healing powers. And I have no doubt in my mind that the Lord the Lord left me with evidence that he was there. And the fact that I can stand and break the bread of life is evidence that God is present. He is present and he is present with you and you and you and all of you. My dear brothers and sisters, I pray, my honest prayer is that those of you who raise your hand, those of you who gave your life to the Lord, or you renewed your relationship with God today, please don't let the devil rob you of your blessings. He is angry with you right now, but you can remind him that he's a liar and the truth is not in him. I belong to Jesus and Jesus alone shall I serve. And I want you, my brothers and sisters, to know that God has called each one of us by name, by name. And if you that one person who did not raise your hand, my prayer to you and for you is that before you leave here, you would raise your hand. Because this is not a joke. <laughs> can I tell you a story real quick? Real quick, you can remain standing. I was stationed in, in Panama, Central America at Fort Clayton. And I was in the gym this particular day. And this brother who I saw in the gym on a frequent basis, lifting weights in particular, the Spirit of the Lord moved on me that day to invite this brother to church. And he says, hey, chaplain, I, <laughs> thank you, but I can't, I can't do that. So I went on doing what I was doing, and the Spirit fell on me again, asking. So I go over where he is. I said, Brother, it would be my honor to have you as my guest at chapel service. And he looked at me and smiled again and said, You don't understand, chap. I, 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 I can't go to your church. So I'm walking away and the Spirit says, ask him again. And in my mind, this brother going to quit smiling and get upset with me. But out of obedience, I did what the Lord told me to do. And the third time, he turned me down. But when I realized that he wasn't turning me down, he was turning down the one who sent me. We had church service that Sunday, and he didn't show up. Monday came, Tuesday came, Wednesday came, and it was Thanksgiving morning, and my phone rung, my little pager started beeping. It was my commander who says, chap, we need you to come to this address. And it was that young man who I had invited three times to come to church on Sunday. 
took a 45 and put it in his mouth and blew his brains out in front of his family. And my brothers and my sisters, I don't play with God. I don't have any gimmicks. I don't have anything up my sleeve. What the Lord tells me to say, I say that thing. And I pray that you would not leave here, whoever you might be, without acknowledging you are the one that the Lord is speaking to. Let's receive the benediction. I charge you, my brother, my sister, to remember that Mary Magdalene was the first to experience the empty tomb. John and Peter was the first to be able to announce that Jesus left the evidence that he was there. And thirdly, the more room you make for Jesus, the more he will occupy in your life. Let us sing Amen in threefold. and sisters, don't let this day be the only day you come back to church or come to church. But you come to church, uh, Joe and, and Lord, it's always good to have you all with us here. Thank you so very much for joining us. And it's good to see all of you, my father's children. God bless you and let heaven continue to smile upon you. Good morning, Shiloh Baptist Church, and welcome to our Sunday. With us this morning, and let's just do a quick quick recap of the sermon topic and the points thank you pastor for that word you shared with us something that we can take on for the rest of the week months and years to come don't forget to join us on our social media platform for all things shiloh guess what we have something coming up really soon and we want to put you on alert it is our pastor's anniversary coming up in april don't be alarmed sound the alarm but we want you to be on alert we want you to be with us in person if you can to celebrate and honor our pastor who has done so much for shiloh and we are praying for him we thank him for all that he does for us and we want you to join us in april for our pastor celebration have an amazing day we will be right right here on Wednesday for our midweek service. We will see you soon, Shiloh. Thank you for joining us for church today. We pray you've been blessed by the word of God from his messenger, Pastor B. Lewis Colleton. Be sure to share this message with your family and friends. Our motto at Shiloh is more prayer, more power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. Remember to stay prayed up so you can have strength at all times. Now, you have the opportunity to bless this preacher and this church with your offerings. Just go to shilohbc.org forward slash give or send a text to the number on the screen. Or you can mail your offering into the church or stop by the church to drop it off. Just remember, God loves a chill forgiver. Join us each Sunday in person or online for Sunday school and Sunday worship service. Then join us each Wednesday virtually 
for midweek service and Wednesday night Bible study. Here at Shiloh, we are a Bible teaching, Bible preaching church with a focus on saving souls. God's word tells us in Psalms 105 verse 4 to seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Until we meet again, always be blessed.